Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So the very first topic for the day today is, is that we got a brand new release today for BDJB 12.50. And what that was, was that we got a new version of Remote Jar Loader in laps, and both of them now sits at 1.2. Now, over here in the change log, you will see that it says laps 1.2 and that the all-in-one fix is added. Now, you might remember from about a month or so ago, I had a section in this video here where I talked about how you should use the all-in-one fix underscore 505 file with gold in in this instance in order to fix a number of black screens as well as some save game issues people were having with their fake package game. Well, now what we can see is, is that that now has been added in where no longer you have to do extra work, such as coming over here and adding this into Gold Hen, moving files around, and so forth. So this is going to be much, much better. The next thing that we can see here is that it says for laps 1.0, 1.1, or 1.1b users, they state read 7 adding all-in-one fixes to laps.iso at the readme. So again, you can see here are some of the pre-compiled files if you'll want to take advantage of those. And if we go back over here to the readme and we scroll down to this number 7, we can see that number seven states that adding all-in-one fixes to laps.iso, the all-in-one fixes resolves the black screen and save data corruption issues in certain games. This is only needed for 1.00, 1.1, and 1.b. As of version 1.2, the fixes are included in the ISO. So again, if you are going to use the latest version, then you don't need to do anything. But if you do, it's actually very simple. You download this L file here and you name it to payload.bin. If you've already got gold hen, just name that one to payload2.bin and run it. And then when you run it for the second time, you do not need the USB drive after an initial successful run. Okay, let's go ahead and take a quick look at this repo here. So we're going to go to releases. And we're going to go ahead and just download the pre-built laps1.2.iso file. I've opened up ImageBurn and loaded the laps1.2.iso, and I'm going to go ahead and get that burnt. Okay, so at this point, you do want to go ahead and download GoldHen and put it on a USB drive. So if you go to the official site here and you scroll down, you will see a GoldHen version 2.4 B18.5. Continue following the prompts and get this downloaded. Once downloaded, extract the goldhen.bin to the root of your USB drive and name it payload.bin. Okay, over on the PlayStation 4, go ahead and insert the disk as well as your USB drive. And we're going to go to where it states BDJB Laps 1.2. Now, this is one of the new features that was not mentioned in the release notes was, was that they did add the version number. So now we can distinguish what is what. So let's go ahead and press X on this and get jailbroken. Okay, and there we go. We get a new pop-up, BDJB Laps 1.2. And right there is the all-in-one patches. And it did find my payload.bin. And it has copied that over to the data folder, and boom, there you go. Goldhen 2.4 is now running on this system. Very, very, very sweet. Okay, so once it finishes with all of that, I did notice that this time I am getting the pop-ups, and there we are in all of its glory. Gold Hen has been activated. Next up, there was an update from Echo Stretch about K-Stuff. And what he said was, was that I know a lot of people are curious about the progress on K-Stuff and how close we are to getting it working. 
I've been putting in time every night and I feel like I'm really close. It's probably just one small thing holding it back. Right now, I'm going through each part of the code piece by piece to figure out exactly what's going on. He does state here that if anyone thinks they might be able to lend a hand to reach out because he obviously works every single day and most of his progress is happening here on weekends. Now, Zeko over here gave a little bit more information to those that maybe could help out, and he basically stated that on old firmwares below 8, the mounting attempts are always 3. Before it succeeds, on 8 and above, the mounting attempts are always 2, followed by a crash without any errors. I've also been hearing a ton of people in the scene asking, what is case stuff for the PlayStation 5? And I'll leave a link to this Wololo article here where it talks exactly what is case stuff. But if you kind of want a little bit of the short version, although modifying reading the kernel isn't possible on the PS5 for now, Slayer's Gorvy has created a runtime debugger, which is able to modify registers and the stack at runtime. In other words, Although we are not able to patch the kernel in RAM, his debugger allows us to patch every instruction at the last minute, just before it gets executed. A set of functions that Slayer's Gorvy has created to patch interesting execution paths on the console is what we commonly call k-stuff. Now, you might remember that right now we can do things like pausing k-stuff on a PlayStation 5 where we can get a bit more performance without case stuff running. Next up, I need to mention the PS5 Easy Host, which just came out and that I just reviewed yesterday in this video that is called New Offline ESP32-S3 Web Host for the PlayStation 5. And the reason I really like this project is, is that if you do purchase one of these devices here, and you can completely run the PS5 jailbreak 100% offline, as well as being able to do that. It is super easy to update. You do not need to use Arduino or Python, as it contains a executable that is called autoflash.exe that is just simple plug and play. Also, this version does not require an SD card and it writes it all to the device itself. Now again, I have a video where I'll walk you through this step by step if you want to take a look at it, but definitely something that I think will be super interesting for those PS5 jailbreak users that are on versions 1.x all the way up to 5.x. And then I did want to remind folks that Laps Core is out. Now this is using Laps and Master Core, and that is where the name comes from. And with this, obviously, if you have that game, Okage Shadow King, then you can exploit a PlayStation 4 on at least these firmware versions right here in order to run Gold Den. Now, I currently don't have one of these machines, so I can't make a video on it. But I really do not believe that there is enough users that actually have this installed for this to matter, but I do think that it is a cool project nonetheless. And then the very last thing is back over on our old remote Lua loader, which was before our BDJB, I did want to let you know that there was a new game that was added in here a couple of weeks ago. While this project isn't getting a lot of love at the moment, it is neat to see that there is some progress being made. So as you can see, this right here is the new title that was just added. Okay, that is going to do it for this one. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out!